Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at chapter 3 related questions from practice exam 1.2 in the fall 2022 semester. So this first question related to chapter 3 is question 8 and it's all about nomenclature. Name the following chemical compounds including a really interesting example at the end of the problem. So first let's start with NO2. N is the symbol for nitrogen, O the symbol for oxygen. Those are two non-metals. We can see that in the periodic table. And so it's a covalent or molecular compound, NO2. And as a result, we can conclude that we need to use a prefix to indicate the numbers of atoms involved. And so we could call this mononitrogen dioxide or quite simply nitrogen dioxide is the typical name here with oxide coming from the fact that oxygen appears second in the formula and is the more electronegative element in this compound. Cl2O3, so similar situation in terms of metal, non-metal, we've got two non-metallic elements involved in this compound and with the two Cl's we're going to call this dichlorine as the first word, trioxide because of the three oxygens and, and here again the ide suffix comes from the fact that oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine and appears second in the chemical formula. Now with MgSO4, we have our first example of an ionic compound consisting of metals and nonmetals. We have a metal, magnesium, together with a nonmetal polyatomic ion, SO4. When you see a grouping of nonmetal atoms like this, especially if it's in parentheses, as we see in the next example, you know you're looking at a polyatomic ion. And so here we have MgSO4. Now Mg is simply magnesium, and we can go ahead and throw magnesium there. We don't need an indicator of the number of ions in the name because this is an ionic compound and the numbers of ions are implied by the charges of the ions. And then there's SO4, and maybe you just know this, maybe it's on your crib sheet, maybe you have experience from everyday life with this ion, who knows? But SO4 2 minus is the sulfate ion. So this is magnesium sulfate, this ionic compound. And again, if you don't know the polyatomic ions, just put them on your crib sheet, get those lists off the slides, and proceed on with your life. All right, Ni3PO42. So here again, we have a metal, nickel ion, together with a non-metallic polyatomic ion, PO4. And here, Potentially where I would start actually is with PO4. Go to my crib sheet, check it out. PO4 3 minus is the phosphate anion. I'm, I'm going to write that off to the side here a little bit because we're going to need a little bit of extra space with the nickel. Now in dealing with this compound, nickel is a transition metal and has access to multiple oxidation states. So we're going to need to use a Roman numeral to indicate the oxidation state or charge of the nickel cation in this compound. And in order to do that, we need to realize from our crib sheet or what have you, PO4 has a charge of negative three. So the total charge, the two PO4 minus anions, is negative six. Each of those individually is negative three. And, to, and in order to balance that charge, the individual nickels must have a charge of plus two. So what we're looking at here is nickel two phosphate with the nickels in the plus two oxidation state or with plus two charge. All right, now the last example here is really interesting. We're given a hypothetical element, the hypothetical element Galvorn with the symbol G. Hard to believe that's not actually used by an actual element, but there is no element G. So you know what? We're gonna make one up for the purposes of this problem and call it Galvorn. Now Galvorn is a non-metal that can form a negative three anion. This may or may not be useful information, but to me, this suggests, or this, this gets my brain thinking about group 15, the nitrogen group, nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic. These are nitrogen and phosphorus in particular are elements that can form monatomic anions with a charge of negative three. So just in case it's useful, I'm gonna jot down that this is a group 15 element. And we also have information about the types of ions formed by this element with oxygen, the types of polyatomic oxy anions that it forms. We've got galvite, GO3, 3 minus, and galvate, and no formula is given for galvate, but 
And again, before we move on, let's think about what galvate would be based on the nomenclature conventions of oxyanions. So remember, hypoite corresponds to the smallest number of oxygens in an oxyanion series. Ite is one more oxygen than that. Eight is one more oxygen than that. So galvate has one more oxygen than galvite and equivalent charge. And so the formula of the galvate anion must be GO4, 3, minus. And this is going to help us address the problem, which is why I mentioned it here. So the question here then is, let's say we have a compound, which is an acid, H3GO4. How do I know it's an acid? Well, it's got H's out front. And we can see from those three H's, which we can think of for the purpose of nomenclature as three H pluses, that the polyatomic anion built into this acid, so to speak, is GO4 three minus. And you know what? We just figured out how to name GO4 three minus. That's galvate. And so now the question becomes, how do we go from the name of this oxy anion to the name of the corresponding neutral acid. Well, by convention, we're going to replace that 8 with ic acid. This is done, for example, with nitrate and nitric acid. Sulfate and sulfuric acid is another related example. And so the name of this compound, H3GO4, is going to be galvic acid where the ic acid suffix comes from the fact that this acid is derived from an 8 anion. All right, let's move on to question 9. So here again we have another nomenclature question. Determine the chemical formula now of an ionic compound containing the following two ions. Sort of pseudo-nomenclature related. We're going to need to do some thinking here. We've got perchlorate ion is the anion, and we've got the stable monatomic iron of a monatomic ion of iron containing 24 total electrons, and that's the cation. So let's make note of that. So perchlorate is an anion, and you could get this from your crib sheet, for example. It's on that list of polyatomic ions, and it has negative charge. And just to get it out of the way, perchlorate corresponds to ClO4 minus. You could pull this off your crib sheet. You could apply the system for naming oxyanions of the halides, that sort of naming convention, however you want to do it. That is perchlorate, and this allows us to rule out a couple of these, right? We can rule out FeClO3. Any of these ClO3s can be uh, immediately ruled out since we know that the perchlorate anion is ClO4 minus. All right, what about the second bullet point? The stable monatomic cation of iron, it's got to be a cation to balance the charge of perchlorate, containing 24 total electrons. Given an electron count, my instinct is telling me to go to the periodic table and look at the atomic number of iron and compare the number of electrons in this ion to the number in the neutral atom, which corresponds to the atomic number. So on the periodic table here, we've got iron's atomic number is 26, right? But in the problem, problem mentions that this ion has a total of 24 total electrons. So we've got two fewer electrons than protons is one way to think about this. And so the ion we're dealing with here is Fe2+. And finally, to complete the problem, we need only realize that in the neutral ionic compound, the charges will balance. So if I have a charge of 2 plus as a result of the iron 2 cation, I need the anions to have a net or total charge of negative 2. So I need two perchlorate ions per iron 2 cation this makes FeClO42 right here the correct formula for this ionic compound. And we can rule out the others because we've logically made our way to the conclusion that the compound is FeClO42.